Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization with Jared Feather, also of Renaissance Periodization. We're gonna take you through the do's and don'ts, the mistakes and the fixes of the close grip barbell bench press. The target, just so you remember, of the barbell bench press is the triceps, but the pecs are a major target as well. Almost always, if you do this exercise correctly, you get a ton of pec work, a surprising amount. So when you do program this exercise, please know that and know that it's not something that just isolates the triceps. Tons of other exercises for that. This is a huge gnarly compound movement that hits the triceps a lot and the chest as well. Let's get into what's wrong and what's right about how to do this. The first mistake is a super common one, gyms across the world, grabbing the bar too close together. Jared, go ahead and uh, show us what that looks like. Folks grab the bar really far inside their shoulders. When they actually begin to press the bar, they can neither get a full stretch in their triceps because the thing bottoms out, or Jared, their, their, their hands will touch their chest. That, okay, so you're not getting a full stretch for the triceps. And a lot of times the lockout doesn't work because it's a super weird position, so they end up getting to there. It's super awkward, go ahead and rack. But the real problem here is first of all, the range of motion is very, very limited. Second of all, because there's a big balance issue when you grab that close, your ability to produce a large degree of force actually goes down. Now, truth be told, if you grab really close, sometimes the relative amount of tension relative that goes to the triceps versus the chest actually does elevate. So there's a plus side to this. The minus side is that you lose stability and an ability to produce a ton of force and recruit tons of motor units in the triceps and in the chest, and it really doesn't feel good on your wrists after a while. So it ends up having all these downsides and you think, well, it does train the triceps proportion a little bit more to go closer. That's true, but skull crushers do an even better job of that. JM presses do a great job. Every kind of tricep extension, when you do your isolations, keep them isolations. When you do your compounds, align yourself to do them best to still target the muscle, but in such a way that allows you to produce a high degree of force, a ton of tension through the target muscle safely for the joints in a stable position. That's the key. Our recommendations on the close grip bench are to position yourself in such a way that your hands just barely come across your rib cage the closer the better up until you can no longer get your hands just outside the ribs. So Jared's gonna demonstrate and he's gonna go all the way down and touch and then come all the way up. Notice his elbows are nice and in. We're gonna demonstrate that uh, tip and mistake later. Now here's the thing. Second problem we'll just take care of right now is going too wide. People say, okay, I can't be super narrow. Great point. How wide should I go? There's a huge temptation with close grip benching to go just a little wider because you're stronger there, but then it's a chest exercise. So, so long as everything is comfortable, your shoulders, your wrists, and everything feels good, including your elbows, you shouldn't go super wide. You should go as close as you can, given that comfort and ability to produce force up until you either become uncomfortable or it becomes untenable to do the movement, or your elbows get all the way flush to your sides and your wrists and your fists descend just to the outsides of your ribs. Anything a little wider is okay if that's the only thing you can do comfortably and you actually get a lot of tricep activation that way. But anything wider arbitrarily after that is just trying to use more weight on the bar. The next mistake is to not do a full range of motion. A lot of folks like to do pump reps in the mid range. Big problem with that, the reason that happens a lot is they grab too close and they actually can't do a full range. But even for folks grabbing normally, sometimes they wanna pump it out in the middle range of motion. Unfortunately, that misses out on two excellent things for the triceps. First of all, there's a huge stretch that occurs to the triceps at the very bottom, which is super growth promoting if you go that low. Second of all, the lockout is very stimulative of the triceps and that's the hard part for the triceps to do a lot of times. Can you get some easy reps going and do a lot of reps in the mid range? Yes, but you're essentially taking away tension and difficulty from the muscles you're targeting. Power lifters the world over, if you ask them, how do you work triceps with close grip bench? They say, okay, it's all about that lockout. Like they'll even do board presses or rack presses where the lockout is the whole point. If you tell a power lifter you're training triceps and you start doing this with close grip bench, they're gonna be like, what the hell are you doing? And they're completely right. So even though it's humbling, even though you might have to use less weight, every single rep in close grip bench should do the following two things. Number one, it should descend all the way down for a deep stretch. Notice how deeply his triceps are stretched. 
and then it should come all the way up for a powerful, willful lockout. Now, some people say, I can't get a good pump like that because I get breaks. Take shorter breaks. You don't have to sit there for three seconds, down and then up and then down and then up. And if you take a little rest break at the top or bottom for a little bit, let your triceps cool off, you can actually keep going my rep style and get that much more of a pump. And remember, the pump's not the number one thing in an exercise like this that you do heavy compound. The number one thing is putting tension through the target muscles, which means getting a very good stretch going all the way down, locking out all the way for the full top position. That's it. Next mistake, super common in a bunch of exercises, is not having a standard range of motion for each single repetition. In order to count reps to essentially give a certain stimulus that we want, we need 10 reps because last week we did whatever, nine. And in order to track progress to see if you're getting stronger over time, you have to standardize your range of motion. That also has a huge benefit of making sure you do the right range of motion every time. So a lot of times what guys will do is they'll do close grip benches and they won't touch the chest on every rep, but some rep they will. And then sometimes they lock out, sometimes they don't. So Jared, throw us a, a bit of a curveball here. Yeah, you know, that was decent. That was a good rep. And then, eh, not really. And then there's a couple mid-range reps there. And then it's sort of your training partner starts to tell you to touch your chest again. You start touching your chest, but maybe you don't lock out. And then somebody says, hey, start locking out. And then you start really locking out. Cool, go ahead and rack, Jared. And then, and then the real question is, uh, how many reps was that? I don't know, like, 9.3, who knows, right? Every rep should look very, very similar, same range of motion. Great way to practice that is to make sure you touch your chest and pause for a split second at the bottom, lock out and pause for a split second at the top. Can you show us what that looks like real quick? So every single rep is gonna be treated as its own animal. Down and touch, and up and lock, and down and touch, and up and lock, that's it. There is no cheating this. And you know, if you're getting stronger, if you're adding reps or adding weight over time, you know your muscles are getting bigger because the range of motion isn't changing. Next mistake is to let the elbows flare too much, especially on the way down. We want the elbows to stay tight to the body in order to activate the triceps relatively more than they otherwise would. When you flare your elbows, you bring more chest activation to bear, which gives you more reps, congratulations, but if you wanted more reps of chest activity, you would adjust a normal grip bench. So sometimes people do what ends up looking like this, on the way down and on the way up, they end up just letting their elbows flare a ton. It's a fine movement, it's good. It's really like a different hand position for the same forces relatively as a normal bench. What you wanna do is, especially on the way down, tuck your elbows into the sides and then come all the way up. If you wanna untuck your elbows on the way up to get more reps, that's probably okay, right? So you can flare as you come up, but on the way down for sure, keep those elbows tucked for maximum tricep involvement. Next mistake, super common, is uncontrolled eccentric. You're essentially dropping the bar on yourself and then pushing it back up. Jared, show us what that looks like. So, uh, and then the up, and then uh, and you get these pump reps going. Here's the thing, you can do more reps like that because it's easier, but we're not here to make things easier. We want them harder. The eccentric control on the bar is critical. Now notice, Jared's eccentric phase can take three seconds, for example, or it can take just one second, but he's controlling the entire time. It doesn't matter which one you do, they're just variations, good enough. It doesn't matter which ones you do, they're just variations, both of them work, but every time you have to stay in control because it's safer and, you know, just by a little bit. And the big benefit is you're letting the muscles work on the eccentric descending phase, which is a big part of actually providing the right amount of stimulus. Your muscles grow from the concentric phase, from an isometric phase when you pause, either at the top or bottom, and they grow from the eccentric phase on the way down. You don't want to rob yourself of any one of those. So stop thinking like, I've got to get as many reps as possible, and if I drop, I can do more reps. You're not here to get as many reps as possible. You should do a great job stimulating the muscles. On top of that, reps are counted as a way to see progress. Don't chase the progress too much. Just do the right thing. Let the progress show itself. If the purpose of the close grip bench was to train your glutes, we would do it like this. Yep, get it, Jared. Oh yeah, glute time, sweet. But the purpose of the close grip bench is actually to train your chest and triceps. So don't move your hips. Body English and wiggling and squirming and pushing with your hips is really stupid. And it poisons your lift with the fatigue 
of all the other muscles you're using that aren't supposed to be getting fatigued. Save your glutes for glute day and leg day and back day when you have to be in a bent over row position. Leave them the hell alone when you're training chest and triceps and just push with your upper body. Power lifters might get a little bit out of some hip drive, even though their butt is not allowed to leave the bench. As somebody growing muscle, you wanna keep hip drive relatively minimum. You should have a solid foundation. Let the upper body do the work. Don't cheat yourself. Nobody gives a shit how much you close grip bench. So if you're trying to impress somebody else, including yourself, moving your butt, you're just embarrassing yourself. Cut it out, lower the weight if you have to, strict upper body only. For super heavy competitive bench presses, power lifters will retract their shoulder blades as much as possible and they'll arch their backs as much as possible. This allows them to stay safe with super heavy weights, they'll limit the range of motion, thus not promoting optimal hypertrophy, and really put their chest into the movement. The thing is, some of those are no good for close grip benching. For close grip benching, we wanna stay safe with the shoulders, but if you tuck your shoulders too far away, you can no longer lock out without a wide grip, and then it becomes a chest exercise. And if we lower the range of motion by arching, we're really kind of robbing the deep stretch at the bottom of our triceps. So you wanna keep a tight position, but you don't wanna do an excessive arch and a huge retraction. Just tuck your shoulder blades down a little bit, arch a little bit if you want, no big deal if you don't, and do the movement right. Jared, set up powerlifting style here. Let's see if you can get a good back cramp going. You know, some people, when they do bench press for hypertrophy, close grip bench, they'll set up just like power lifters. You can lift more weight like this. And all of a sudden, yeah, that's a fine looking close grip bench. But notice his triceps aren't getting a huge stretch at the bottom. The elbow angle isn't that deep. And sometimes it's even kind of hard to lock out. Look, notice he's not completely locking out. His elbows are soft because he can't lock out through his chest. His, his shoulders are tucked back so far. So, but if he relaxes a little bit, go ahead and show us the right way. So he's not gonna arch as much, much less of an arch. He's not retracting his shoulder blades nearly as much. And all of a sudden he gets a deeper elbow angle at the bottom and can fully lock out at the top. That's the right way to do close grip bench. Yes, you use less weight like that, but the benefit goes to the triceps and to actually growing you. The next mistake is thinking there's a dogmatic way you have to lift technique-wise and ignoring the stimulus to fatigue ratio indices that we're taking away. Stimulus to fatigue meaning, are you feeling the target muscles being hit and disrupted and stimulated? And on the fatigue side, mostly are your connective tissues uh, able to actually tolerate the stuff or are you having joint and connective tissue pain or essentially sort of pre-pain where it feels sort of awkward? If those things are happening, you can change your technique. For example, let's say Jared is trying to close grip with this setup and all the way down to the middle of his middle of the normal place where you press. And like his elbows feel a little funky here, his wrists don't feel that great. What maybe he can do is go to there. So go ahead and do a couple reps to the lower part there, Jared. Yep, so instead of going to the middle of the chest, he's gonna go to the sternum and he may find that he gets a great pump, great amount of tension in the triceps. He might not find that. He might try something else as pressing to the nipple line. So what he might do is press all the way down the nipple line. It's a great stretch at the bottom for the triceps right there, but not everyone's shoulders can handle it. So it's really a trade-off that only the individual can make. And he might go a little bit closer with his grip and find that that's much better for his elbows or that he feels in his triceps that much more and or he might go a little bit wider in his grip and actually figure out that a little bit wider of what most people close grip bench hits everything like it's supposed to. Perfect, Jared. So the real kicker here is start with a basic technique like we're teaching in this video, but after that, experiment with putting the bar a little higher on chest, a little lower on your chest, a little wider, a little narrower, tucking the elbows a ton versus letting them get out just a little bit. You're gonna find your own personal technique that works best for you. How do you know it's working best for you? You feel your triceps and to some extent your chest, really gnarly stimulation, tons of tension through it. If you're doing high reps, you get a metabolite burn in your triceps. You get a good pump from the exercise and you feel after the workout like, holy crap, my triceps are messed up. That's all good things. And at the same time, you wanna feel like your shoulder joints, elbow joints, wrist joints, and everything feel the best they possibly can given the technique you're using. The last mistake in the close grip bench is going either too heavy or too light. The good news here is there really is no too heavy for the close grip bench. Sets of five to 10 are awesome because this is the exercise where you hit your fastest twitch tricep fibers amazingly with a ton of tension through a full range of motion, 
with low repetitions. It's great in the five to 10 range for most folks. What about the 10 to 20 range? Also great for close grip bench because the triceps get a really good hit. But to be honest, we have so many other tricep exercises, more isolation ones, GM, JM presses, skull crushers, overhead extensions, every kind of cable push down. They're really good in the 10 to 20 range. And we probably, because we're gonna be doing most of our work in that range anyway for triceps, we probably wanna keep close grip out of that just because we wanna save it for the heavy work. And we have so many other options in 10 to 20. So it's okay in the 10 to 20 rep range, but maybe not ideal. And then, the 20 to 30 rep range, our highest rep range for hypertrophy, a lot of times, or theoretically, it would work for close grip bench. What ends up happening is your pecs get tired or stimulated so much that they're the limiting factor or your front delts. So it ends up being that ideally, yeah, 20 to 30 reps would work, but other muscles tire out first. It doesn't let your triceps take a huge hit. And if you're doing a lot of close grips with 20 to 30 reps, it's okay, even if your triceps get a big hit, but there are so many other cable exercises, dumbbell exercises for triceps that can do that so much better without all the added systemic fatigue to your pecs. Because making your pecs do 20, 30 reps is a lot. You could be saving your pecs for the great work that they can have with heavier weights or lighter weights on their own training sessions. So, Ideally, close grip benches should be in the five to 10 rep range for most folks, maybe up to about sets of 15 are totally cool. 10 to 20, especially 15 to 20 reps, usually would say for other exercises, and sets of 20 to 30 usually not great for close grip benches and for sure better for other exercises because the pecs and the shoulders tend to be limiting factors. Folks, that's it for close grip bench tips. Use them wisely and remember that stimulus to fatigue ratio, how much are you hitting your target muscles versus how not awesome your joints are feeling. You gotta find the best combination of techniques. It's gonna take some time. Feel free to experiment. There are different bars like the football bar where you can grab neutral. That's a great option. You can even do close grip dumbbell presses, machine presses, and all that good stuff. Almost all these tips, even for close grip incline, are really virtually identical. Use them well. If you have questions, shoot them into the comments. Hopefully somebody that knows will answer, help each other out. And if you want more videos on these technique breakdowns, throw some exercises in there at the bottom for us. We're always looking to do more videos because quite honestly, I've got nowhere else to be. I have no friends. I have nowhere to go. Nobody talks to me. Thanks for tuning in. Hey guys, Dr. Mike here with Jared Feather, whatever, IFP pro bodybuilder. We're here to do a Russian style close grip bench. You ready? <laughs>